Hello everyone, welcome to part two. So here we'll talk about the role of environment in health and infection. So first let's introduce. We shall depart from the broad criteria and definitions of environment and pollution. We shall strive to concentrate more on planning, management, and disease spread. Let's begin with you no know, general introduction. So, change to our planet's land use and land cover represent some of the most persuasive changes humanity has made to Earth's natural system. With roughly half of the temperate and tropical forest factor, nearly half of the ice-free desert free terrestrial landscape converted to croplands or pasture. And more than 8 lakhs dams or what we call 800,000 dams impeding the flow through more than 60% of world's rivers. We are all aware that the natural environment including air, water and place is a significant uh, predictor of human health. We can claim that the health of our surroundings affects our health, right? We are well aware that overcrowding and bad management of the human environment interactions have given rise to idea of pollutions, okay? The appearance of COVID-19 is the fruit of our poor human environment relationship. So, in the next slides, we will talk about how inadequate waste management in cities, slums, and hospitals has exacerbated the issue. Poor planning, particularly in terms of resource distribution and municipalities, is a major source of pollution and disease outbreak. COVID-19 has focused our attention on the ecology of urban areas, particularly slums. It would not incorrect to say that the epidemic has highlighted the global lack of urban planning, uh, particularly in uh, uh, what we call underdeveloped nations. Slums in cities and peri-urban regions have become COVID hotspots in several nations, as well as important locations for the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in major cities. A lack of infrastructure and health services, along with low living conditions, exacerbates the situations and makes residents more vulnerable to epidemics and pandemics. The lockdown in many countries forced migration of daily wagers and laborers to different regions, right? So this not only results is more chance of acquiring COVID-19, but also its transmission in areas where there were no cases before. Researchers discovered that nation with a uh, uh, you know, larger population density and a higher percentage of the older populations are more likely to be affected by COVID-19 than other countries. Poor availability of water, language obstacles, and restricted internet connections are the key social problems limiting disease, uh, uh, you know, relief efforts efforts. While uh, uh, researching environmental risk factors, researchers discovered that 
uh, indoor air pollution version the uh, severity of COVID-19. Furthermore, they estimated that a modest increase of one gram uh, uh, per um, uh, per meter cube in PM 2.5 might result in an 8% rise in COVID-19 mortality rate. Dumping garbage created by treatment centers or hospitals into sewage and then into aquatic bodies may also increase the rate of COVID-19 transmission. Aside from the poor health, bad urban slums, and hospital administration. A variety of additional uh, environmental uh, variables uh, 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 have exacerbated the problems. Changes in exposure to heat stress, air pollution, respiratory allergens, infectious illness, and natural hazards, as well as increasing water shortage, food insecurity, um, and uh, population relocations are all consequences of anthropogenic climate disruptions. Some infections, illnesses, geographical distributions. Uh, I'm talking about especially vector-borne disease like uh, malaria are more in response to temperature and precipitations variations. Extreme precipitations and heat events have been connected to outbreak of waterborne and uh, foodborne uh, illness. In the next slides, we'll look at how we are changing our environment, how this has influenced our health, and what causes have led to formation of viruses. You know, there is a little question that some of these reforms have, you know, unmistakably uh, resulted in improved public health. There has been a favorable effect in reducing malaria in Tennessee Valley and nations uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, particularly Nigeria, by you know draining marshes that were habitat for mosquito vectors. For example, in many regions of the globe, the fundamental motive for deforestation, dams, uh, uh, and irrigation projects have been, you know, enhanced the availability of food and clean energy, which are key building blocks for public health. But is it always good for people to make changes to environment? There is always a flip side of every coin. Some of the detrimental consequences of land use uh, change have just lately become apparent. Dams and irrigation projects raise the frequency of cystosomiasis and malaria in portion of Africa and South Asia dramatically. They also enhance exposure of other vector borne illnesses with high mor uh, morbidity and death rates such as Rift Valley River, Phileriasis, Lesmaniasis, uh, uh, Draconolosis, uh, what you call the Onchocerciasis, uh, and Japanese encephalitis. Malaria exposure rises as a result of deforestation in Africa and South America. Forest cutting changes the composition and density of aquatic snail species in region of Africa, facilitating the spread of cystosomiasis. Okay, so nutrition, nutrient enhancement with nitrogen and phosphorus from agricultural runoff hundreds of miles upstream, for example, causes a change in the vegetarian, vegetation pattern of low, uh, uh, low lowland wetland that favors the more efficient malaria vector like Anopheles vestipenis over the less efficient vectors Anopheles albimenus, leading to increased malaria exposure among coastal population. So the issue is, why are we discussing it? 
Is there a meaningful concept? Yes, there is. We look at the idea of genetic illnesses. I have dedicated the third portion to the notion because it's so vital. In coming slides, we will look at various causes as well as a general overview. Land use changes are, uh, you know, land use changes that, you know, uh, modify human wildlife interactions can be significant source of genetic illness. Human encroachment on the wildlife habitat as well as hunting uh, and consumption of wild meat can benefit public health by providing new land for agriculture. And in the case of uh, bushmeat, rich source of nutrients. However, these activities also increase the possibility of genetic infection spreading from animal to human population. Okay, so there is a solid evidence that these processes were critical in the uh, earliest epidemics of HIV and Ebola viruses, as well as the number of lesser known genomes. The ability of these changes in animal human interactions to alter disease transmission helps to explain why around 75% of the uh, of new infectious illnesses are genesis. It is now time to reveal that the reality that COVID-19 is a zoonosis disease. This section, next slides, I will only give you a definition of genesis. So you may, you know, investigate more on your own and the rest of its components such as how they spread, how to limit their spread, and most importantly, how COVID-19 developed will be described, you know, in the next part. Okay, so people, you know, gain much from animals. Many individuals have everyday interactions with the animals, both at home and away from home. Animals give humans all throughout the world with food, fiber, livelihood, travel, sport, friendship, and education. Animals, on the other hand, can carry hazardous pathogens that can transmit to human and cause illness. These are known as genetic illnesses or genesis. So, in this section, we covered the fundamentals of the environment planning and their bad management in the spread of COVID-19 and other illnesses such as malaria. I have included a definition as well as, you know, examples of genetic illnesses. Before proceeding to uh, the following phase, we can uh, do further research on genesis to become acquainted with the topic. Okay, so in the next part, We'll talk more about genesis and the spread of this diseases. Thank you. We'll see you in the next part.